What's up everybody? Once again, my name is Matt and welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask 3D. In the last episode, we completed Great Bay Temple and in this episode, we are going to do a few side quests. But first, you know, after a long temple like that, I think we deserve some rest and relaxation. So back inside Zora Hall, the rest of the band is waiting on us to rehearse. And this is entirely optional, but it's a neat little scene, and I kind of want to show this off. So, let's talk to the band. What's going on, Tijo? What have you been doing? You're late, Macau. Oh, oh, guess what? Lulu's voice. She's gotten it back. Oh, that's great, man. All right, let's talk to Japis now. You're late, Macau. Where were you while you were skipping practice? Lulu's been waiting for you. Alright, and now let's go and talk to Evan. You did great, Macau. Lulu's voice has returned. Well, it looks like Lulu wants to talk to you, so go see her now. Okay, and last but not least, let's talk to Lulu herself. Macau, you came back safely. That's good. I was surprised when my voice turned that lonely island into a turtle. But that song you played for me, my mother used to sing it often, long ago. Those eggs were laid to remind me of that. That song is from when I was a very young child, so I'd forgotten it. I've put you through some horrible experiences, Macau. But I'm all better now. Well, the town's concert is very soon. Let's start a rehearsal. Great idea! One, two, three! And now we get to listen to the Indiegogos perform their newest song! Alright, so there we go. Not a very long song, but you know what? I liked it. Good job, everyone. Let's take five. I feel refreshed. So now it's time to take on a few side quests. Let's head outside because in the last episode, while we were inside the temple, we did actually manage to collect all 15 stray fairies. So what do you say? We start off by restoring the great fairy in this area back to normal. And we can do so by hookshotting across to these trees and uh, going from island to island until we actually reach the Great Fairy's Fountain. Now, they did add something new to this area on the 3DS version. There's actually another new fishing hole. So, eventually we'll reach a split in the tree line where we can go left or right. If we go to the left, we can actually go to the new fishing area. However, we're not going to bother with that right now. Like, I'm sure we'll visit the fishing areas before the end of this project. So instead, we're just going to go to the right and continue making our way towards the fairy fountain because this is much more important right now. But uh, it does seem like we're going to need our blast mask. So let me grab that real quick. And uh, we'll just blow up these two rocks. That way we can get inside. And uh, we'll do this as a Zor because why the heck not? Like... We've shown off this animation for pretty much every other transformation, so we might as well do it as a Zora now. So there you go, fairy friends. Reunite with your brethren and bring forth the great fairy for the Great Bay Area. And there she is with her purple hair glory. Oh, courageous young one. I am the great fairy of courage. Thank you for returning my broken and shattered body to normal. As thanks, I shall lend you my strength. So this upgrade is actually really, really awesome, and I would definitely recommend picking this one up if you're a new player, especially since all of these stray fairies are pretty easy to collect in a Great Bay Temple. But um, even though she said the word strength, she's not actually going to increase our attack. Instead, she's going to do something else, which you'll see in a second. So our defense has been strengthened. Enemies now do half as much damage as before. So yeah, pretty freaking sweet, right? Anyways, this event is going to get added to our notebook and completed as well. So we are done with that. There's only one more great fairy left. 
Come see me whenever you are overcome by weariness. And, you know, I gotta say, like, the great fairy fountains look amazing. Like, look at those two mermaid pillars. They look freaking awesome on the 3DS version. Like, I gotta hand it to the designers. They definitely outdid themselves. It's a shame you don't spend too much time in there just because there's, like, so much little tiny detail that you can see. But, um, eh, whatever. So, now that that is done... Um, in the last episode, we actually did start a side quest while we were in the middle of the temple, and I do plan on finishing that in this episode, but there is a minigame that we can play here in Great Bay Coast, and I would like to do that first. So, um, let's just head right over here, and if we swim sort of like forward, eventually we're going to spot something new, and we kind of got to do this quick because I believe, uh, this event stops occurring at 4 a.m., so... If we get there beforehand, we should be alright. But yeah, so, there is now a single lit torch on this island, and that's sort of the quote-unquote entrance to this minigame. So, what do you say we go up to it and, uh, check out the sign that's nearby? The Fisherman's Jumping Game. Please ride the boat to the Fisherman's Island to inquire about playing. Alright, so we're going to play this minigame, but uh, first things first, let me grab my bunny hood, because trust me, you are going to want this for the minigame, and um, you're also going to want to play this as a human, plus the only way to actually get on the island that the fisherman is on is via hookshot. We need to latch on to that tree, so I'm just going to stay into this view until we get close enough, and then uh, latch on to the tree. Hopefully we make it in time because, um, like I was saying, yeah, this guy takes a break at 4 a.m. So as long as we talk to him before 4 a.m., we should be fine. And it seems like we'll make it, like, just barely. So there we go. Now, make sure you do equip your bunny ears before you talk to this guy because he will not let you put them on while you're playing the game. Now that the seas are back to normal, I've started a little business aimed at tourists. If you pay 20 rupees, I'll show you a jumping game that has a really big prize. Alright then. If you're up for it, go to the island in the center. Well, I want to play, so let's just do what he says then, I guess. Oh, you're up for it. Now then, I'll explain the rules, so listen carefully. I'm going to light the torches on each of the surrounding four islands in a particular order. Jump to the island that has the lit torch. If you can jump to it before the torch goes out, you'll get one point. If you get 20 or more points within the time limit, you'll get a big prize. But it'll cost you 20 rupees for one try. How about it? Will you give it a try? Heck yeah, man. Great, in that case, I'll start. So yeah, this is a pretty easy minigame, especially if you have the bunny hood. All you gotta do is jump from island to island in the bunny hood, makes this a breeze since obviously you move a lot faster and jump a lot farther. Now, a couple of tips you want to keep in mind. Never do a roll jump if you're wearing the bunny hood because you'll jump way too far and actually end up landing in the ocean. If you land in the ocean, you lose all of your points. Like, not only do you lose the minigame, all of your points that you collected don't even count. So, say you got like over 20 points and jump in the water. Well, guess what? You need to try again now. And, oh, that was actually really, really close. Also, when you're jumping, you might want to try and pull back on the control stick just ever so slightly because even with the bunny hood, you pretty much jump to like one edge of the platform all the way to the other. So if you pull back, um, it should give you like enough of a sort of backwards momentum to not fly off the edge. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Obviously, if you don't have the bunny hood, you really don't need to worry about flying off the edge. And, uh, you should still be able to complete this minigame relatively easy, even if you don't have the bunny hood. So don't really worry too much about that. But there we go, 20 points. And you know what, um, I guess just for the sake of things, I'll go and grab this 21st point. And, um, now I'll just cut until the end of this minigame, so I'll see you in a second. And done. Alright, that's it. Yeah, I pretty much just stood there the entire time. No joke. Uh-oh. That was a little too easy. Oh, well. Here's your prize. So, for completing that very easy minigame, not only will this event get added to our bomber's notebook, we're also going to complete it and get ourselves... Well, I kind of spoiled it, but yeah, we get ourselves a piece of heart. So, one more, and we complete another container. 
and I was thinking of saving up to buy a big ship. Now it looks like I may go bankrupt. Whoops, sorry about that, bud, but it's not really my problem. So, um, now that we're done with this, we're actually going to start that other event called Reuniting the Frog Choir that we started in the last episode. So, we already talked to one frog while wearing the Don Garo's mask, and now we're going to talk to the remaining four. So, let's head over to the Southern Swamp, since there's, um, sort of two in this area that we can collect and one of them is actually inside Woodfall Temple but first there's one other really easy one that we can talk to so let me grab my Goron mask real quick because one cool thing that you can do as a Goron is actually since you're so big you can actually Goron roll right through the waters in the swamp here and uh, we just want to go past this first transition area since this is where we will find the frog. I didn't really point this out, but we definitely passed by it um, when we were taking the boat cruise early on in this game. But yeah, right on this log is another frog. So let me just grab my Don Garo's mask real quick, and we'll put that on, and now we can talk to the frog. Ah, Don Garo, it has been so long. What has brought you all this way? Could it be you came all this way looking for me? Ah, you need not say a thing. Upon seeing that face, I understand. I see, but I'd heard that it was still winter in the mountains. When spring comes, I shall definitely go to the mountains. So let us meet again. Okay, so that is frog number two. Only three more to go. Now, um, like I was saying, there is one in Woodfall Temple, so let's play the Song of Soaring and warp right up there. Now, that does mean we need to reopen the way to the temple and go inside, and I actually want to show this off because this is a sort of unique aspect to Majora's Mask, and I think a lot of new players don't really understand this, so when you reset time, everything gets reset, including the temple, so... Uh, real quick, we actually do need to play the Sonata of Awakening to, you know, cause the temple to appear. If I could actually, you know, find it in my songbook. Where is it, man? I swear, sometimes I can just not find it. There we go. Alright, so now let's just play this real quick. And, um, this will cause the temple to reappear. Now, one cool thing they added to Majora's Mask 3D is that, yeah, all the cutscenes for, like, you know, stuff reappearing or stuff that you would see more than once, they actually shorten them up, which is really, really nice, so it does speed things along ever so slightly, but this is our first time going into a temple, you know, after we already beat it, so since we did reset the three-day cycle, we lost, like, all of our progress, so as you can see, all the stray fairies are back, and when we enter the temple, well, this happens now. Ye who have challenged my mighty blade, courageous traveler of time and of space. If thou art fearless, stand before me that I might witness thy power once more. And that's pretty much the boss re-challenging us, and this only happens after you completed the temple once normally, but now we can actually step into this Majora portal and be taken right to the boss room, where we can re-challenge the boss, and assuming we win, it'll sort of act like we've completed up the temple again. So, for instance, here in Woodfall, it would cause the poison in the swamp to dissipate. And, um, up in Snowhead, obviously, it would cause spring to appear. And I just wanted to sort of explain how that worked, because I haven't yet had the opportunity to show that off, since I've gotten really lucky in managing my time in that I haven't actually had to redo a temple yet, which is really, really nice. But, um... Some of you in the comments weren't so lucky because I've gotten a few questions about that, like what do you do when you reset time and you haven't exactly completed up everything that you need to do. Well, in most cases, it will um, involve you going back to the temple and refighting the boss. Anyways, since we do keep our items though, all we gotta do is shoot this eye and now we can ride this platform up and um, use our Deku Flower to reach the area where the mini boss is and uh, fight the second version of Gekka, or, well, I guess the first version technically, since the second version was inside Great Bay, but yeah, we can fight Gekko again, and uh, talk to the frog once we defeat him. Now, this might seem kinda tedious, but um, what's cool about Majora's Mask is that since you do keep all your items, it allows you to fight these bosses in 
kind of different ways. So we don't actually even need to use our Deku mask anymore if we don't want to. Instead, what we can do is um use our Goron mask. So let me show this off real quick. Um, what you can do is if you can curl up fast enough and you actually need to do a Goron ground panel. Although this is going to be kind of hard since he's already charging at me. But uh, let me try and get the timing down. That's not going to work. But yeah, basically you want to wait until he's like right next to you and uh, do a Goron ground pound because if you do, it'll actually cause him to flip over. There we go, finally. And uh, you can just like flip him over that way. And now, obviously, we still need to use our bow to shoot him down off of the ceiling. So it's kind of a new, unique way to fight this guy. A little bit different than before, but um, nothing too special, I guess. Kind of just wanted to show it off. And I guess I'll just do the rest of the fight this way since obviously I don't feel like pulling out my... Uh, Deku mask just to fight this guy again, but there we go second hit one more and he should be done So come on dude just spin around in your turtle and there we go All right, this should be it guys. We just stand still dude. Come on. There we go finally and uh, That's pretty much all we had to do inside the temple. So let's don the Don grows mask once more talk to this frog and then we'll get out of here. So let me grab this and uh, see what's going on with this dude. And I'm pretty sure they actually all say the same thing. So you know what? I'm just going to skip over all this text. And uh, there we go. That is the third frog. Very nice. Only two more to go. And the next one is very, very easy. So let's uh, play the Song of Soaring. And when you play this inside a temple, it actually doesn't allow you to warp. Instead, it does bring you back to the entrance. So... Still kind of useful, but um, this will allow us to at least leave the temple quicker and then we can play the Song of Soaring again to warp to where we actually need to go. Oh, and uh, in case you were wondering, no, we don't need to refight a Dalwa, at least not right now because there's nothing else that I want to do here in the Woodfall area. So let's warp again and uh, this time we're going to go to good old Clock Town because there's one frog that we can talk to in this area and... I believe I pointed this guy out like a long, long time ago, probably in like the first few episodes of this LP, but um, yeah, back in the laundry pool, there is one frog that we can talk to, I think, near like the tree that is there, so we're gonna do that, and then we'll go and find the last frog, so, uh, he should be like, right directly in front of us, there he is, what's going on, dude? And yeah, they all say the same thing, so blah de blah -de blah but um, there's our fourth frog. Now, all the frogs have been mentioning that they know it's still winter up in the mountains, and the last frog is actually in Snowhead, but um, obviously none of the frogs are going to appear until it's spring, so what we need to do is um, warp up to Snowhead, and we need to re-challenge Go, that way we can stop the eternal winter from happening over Snowhead, and change it to spring so i already sort of explained how the temples work when you reset time so what i'm gonna do is just go and fight goat and i'll see you guys when i'm done all right so there we go goat has been defeated and now it is spring here in snowhead yet again now let's just equip our don Gro's mask and we're done i've been waiting for you don Gro. forgive me if i'm mistaken but it looks like you have lost a little weight. Holy crap, how fat was Don Gro? As you can see, Don Gro, the long winter has ended, and spring has finally come to these mountains. Let us begin our chorus. Alright, so now we get to conduct the frog chorus. Isn't that just sweet? The conducting was spectacular, and all of our members rose to the occasion. This is how deeply we were moved by your spectacular conducting. Alright, and they give us a piece of heart. Very nice, thanks a lot guys. Let us do it again sometime. Uh, sure. And that's going to complete the Reunite the Frog Choir event in our notebook. Finally, man, that took a little while, but it was worth it. Anyways, um, since it is spring, there is one more thing that we can do while we're here in this area, and we needed the Zora mask to do this, so since we have it, we might as well do it. But, um, yeah, obviously, since it's spring, all the ice in this area has melted, and, uh, it's no longer 
you know, frozen over. So we can take our Zora mask, and now what we can do is uh, dive into this water. And some of you guys may have noticed that when it was frozen over, there was a chest over here. So now that it's thawed out, we can dive down and open this up. Because, well, guess what's inside this chest? Well, it's a piece of heart. So there we go. We are well on our way to another heart container. Now that we got that, though, that's pretty much everything that I wanted to do. So let's play the Song of Soaring. And um, we're going to go back to Great Bay Coast because there's still a couple of other things that we can do in that area. So let's just warp over here. And um, I think that's going to do it for this episode. So if you guys enjoyed this part, like rating would be greatly appreciated. If you want to see more, consider subscribing. But once again, guys, my name is Matt. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.